So I think it's time to talk. Look at that big clump. Huge clump of bison hair. So soft. Maybe the helicopter's coming to check out the bison. Coyote and strong wind are over here hanging out and the rest of the herd's coming up. Both coming up to meet us. I've gotten a lot of questions as to what are we doing with these guys? Are we a meat production? Are we conservationalists? What in the world are we doing raising bison? So I'm sure you've heard some of the stories how I wanted to get into doing something agriculture related. I stumbled upon these animals, um, found out how cool they were to raise, and I just really wanted to be involved with them. So one of the things that is hard to swallow with some people uh, is these animals are primarily used for meat today. The bison community is a tremendous community. They have worked tirelessly to be able to restore these guys to the plains and where they belong. But one of the facts of the matter is these animals are primarily used as meat. Well, that fact is a little hard to take for some people, um, myself included. I understand these animals are truly majestic. They are a wonder to see out in the field. Um, and the thought that these animals came from extinction, literally from like, they say somewhere between 100 and 1,000 animals to now what we see today as over uh, half a million animals. It's really hard to get our minds around uh, consuming that uh, animal for meat. But here is something that's really interesting to think about. One of the best ways to be able to preserve a species like these bison is to actually consume them. It sounds very counterintuitive, I understand, I know, um, but the fact of the matter is when you can get people involved with knowing how good this meat is for you, how good it tastes, um, and all the benefits that surround it, people will tend to get involved with actually raising the animal. And what that does is that helps the end user with the meat, and it also helps the person who is trying to raise and trying to preserve the animal. Because, you know, I would love to be considered a conservationalist and strictly a conservationalist. I would love to be able to look at these animals and say, you know, uh, we don't need to consume them and um, all, all is well. The problem with that is these animals cost a lot of money to raise, unfortunately. You know, there's land costs, there's fencing costs, there's corral costs. And believe it or not, these animals were put here for us. And I think that there is a balance that we can have from taking and having the viewpoint of when we came over and we slaughtered them to killing them all from the other end of saying, well, we can't touch them. I want to see these animals thrive. Uh, the National Bison Association has a goal of getting these animals to 1 million. We're about 400,000 animals away from that. I want to be able to see these guys out into multiple fields. I don't want uh, my ranch to be unique. I want people to experience these animals on the producer side of things, also on the consumer side of things. And unfortunately, the fact of the matter is we need to be able to consume them for that to happen. You know, God put these animals on the earth for us. He was looking out for us when he created these animals. 
The Indians benefited from these animals for thousands of years, and we now are able to benefit from them also. But we do need to respect them. Um, I am a firm believer that, you know, I think that we can consume them. I think it is okay. But I think that we need to respect the life that gives its life up for our life. And I think that is the mentality that we need to come into it with. I am not going to be slaughtering or killing any of these animals in the field. I am with you and uh, they have become a part of my daily routine. They are uh, like my pets and whether that's a good business move or not, uh, I won't go there, but they are a part of my daily routine and I couldn't see uh, actually killing them for meat. So don't worry about that. But I think more people need to know about the benefits of these animals. It is hard to think about killing one of these animals and eating it. But did you know that bison is actually some of the highest protein tested in any meat? Um, it is low in cholesterol. It's low in fats. It's high in omega-3s when they're eating out on grass like this. There's so many benefits to bison meat that we can benefit from and we can be grateful and show respect to this animal that roams in our field majestically. Did you know that bison are one of the few animals on the face of the planet that cannot get cancer? They're actually doing a lot of research on them right now. Um, that I know of, it's bison and mako sharks. When they have injected cancer cells into them, their body, their immune system actually shuts it down. A good friend of mine sells bison meat and he has said that he actually has cancer patients that come out of their chemotherapy treatments and they come and they buy bison meat and it literally makes them feel a little bit better. He doesn't know why, he doesn't understand any of the scientific claims behind it, so we're not claiming anything there. But there is something behind this meat that is actually really cool. And it's not just the live animal, just all the way from the animal in the field to the animal on the dinner table is just completely majestic. So I get it, it sounds counterintuitive, but if you want to see more bison in the field, eat more bison meat. It doesn't make sense logically, but it actually does work. The more you support your bison producers, the more you will see these animals out in the field and it will not be a novelty like it is today. But like I said, I think that we need to show respect to this animal, any animal, chickens, pigs, cows, any animal that gives its life up for us we need to respect that. I think that that is a fundamental example that God has given us and that we need to respect that order that he's given us. When the Indians were sustained off of the animals, they used everything. They used hides, bones, skulls, everything. And I think that we need to be doing the same thing. Anything and everything that we can use off of these animals, we need to do that and we need to show respect. So yes, I understand it's a hard pill to swallow, um, but it is a necessary pill to swallow for these animals to keep going into existence. If we only focus on the conservation side of things and we do not consume them, there's not enough people out there, myself included, unfortunately, that have enough money that can just give these animals free roam and just let them go. We need to be able to bring the numbers up on these guys and in order to do that, we need to be able to consume them. And we need to be able to be grateful for the benefits that they can give to us. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you supporting our ranch by subscribing, liking the video. Um, and I understand this is hard uh, and I know some of you are gonna have some mixed feelings on this. So. Please don't think that I don't understand. I do. Um, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this. Um, tell me what you're thinking. 
and uh, I would love to be able to hear from you. But uh, that's just my take on it. Don't worry, like I said, these animals are gonna be around for years and years to come. Um, they have become uh, a lot of part of my family. So they are here to stay, I assure you. Um, but I'm just talking about the buffalo industry as a whole. And um, you know, some of you guys have asked if I'm getting into the meat side of things. Uh, no, I'm not, not as of now. Um, maybe years down the road, who knows, I might change my mind, but no, not right now. We are a calf cow operation is what they call it. Uh, so we will be raising these animals and then selling off um, the excess animals that we have uh, to other bison producers. I want to be involved in other bison producers startups. I want to be able to be involved in other bison ranchers uh, journey just like how we are going along also. So that's kind of our take on this. But I am in no way against uh, those producers that uh, want to get into the meat side of things. If you guys enjoyed the new shirts, Broken Arrow Bison Petting Guide, uh, check out our website. It's brokenarrowbison.net. Thank you guys for subscribing. It really helps us uh, push these animals forward. Uh, like the National Bison Association says, um, the goal is one million animals. So we are pushing forward for that. And uh, hopefully you guys are pushing also. So thank you. Remember to like, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you next time.